played at U of M, one of my teammates, has worked his way to become the uh, – go golfers, all right? That's worked it. his way to become number 42 in the world. He's had a great, uh, successful career playing professionally, kind of playing mainly on the European tour, but he's really can become like a worldwide golfer. So thanks for joining us today, Eric. Absolutely. Pleasure, dude. Good to, good to see you and good to be here. Yeah. Cool. Well, so we've got kind of a few questions here for you today. Just want to kind of talk about a, a, a few things. We might get a couple of questions from our viewers here a little later on here as well that we might do a little Q&A. Cool. Um, but firstly, what have you not been up to the last few weeks? I know it's been an interesting time. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's been interesting for everybody, right? Um, we're fortunate that we're not in a complete lockdown like, like some other places and some other countries. Um, we can still get groceries and you know work out or go for a run or whatever. So it's been it's been good on that that side. But I've been hitting balls into a net, um, playing guitar, playing some video games, reading a lot of books. Um, Netflix, obviously, everybody is watching Netflix. And yeah, honestly, it's 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 just been nice to be home. You know, it's a it's a, it's something as professional golfers we don't get to do often. So um, it's just been nice to be here with my wife, to be honest. Yeah, it's nice to kind of take a little bit of time to kind of relax here. I know you're excited to get back out there and compete again. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed you've been pretty active on Twitter. That's for, that's for sure. It's kind of funny to watch your, your tweets here occasionally. Um, I notice you know, you love playing the guitar, so that that's awesome. Has there been you know is that kind of your peaceful you know release from everything here or? Yeah. Um... Not always so peaceful. Sometimes it gets quite loud, but um, <laughs> definitely, definitely a, a way for me to, you know, get away and, and um, do my own thing a little bit. I've been playing guitar for a very long time now, and um, with this downtime, it's I could kind of dive a little bit deeper into it. So it's it's right. been fun. Yeah, you're pretty good at it. Keep keep the post coming on Twitter. We love it ourselves. <laughs> the other post I found really entertaining was uh, last week the. Uh, you're essentially getting ready for the Masters. So how you kind of cut to to Rose's swing there at the end, your your wife. I thought that was hilarious. I think it was really yeah, cool. yeah. Grace and Claudia has wanted us to do it. Um, yeah, and it turned out much better than I expected. We were kind of nervous to to sort of do it, and I had to squeeze into Rose's tights, but I managed, and and people found it quite funny. So it turned out yeah. great. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, I know you're excited to play in the Masters here, hopefully in November or so. It's, it's kind of pretty exciting. Uh, I'm going to kind of jump to that too, because I've got a couple of photos that I'm going to show the viewers here. Um, mm -hmm. Of I got the chance to spend the time with you um, at Augusta. Uh, I think 2010, we went to the practice round after playing in Augusta State's tournament. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it was 09. Um it was my freshman year and, and I mean, geez, I'll never forget that day. First time and first time ever I've been at Augusta. So, um, I mean, yeah, that was such a cool time. We look so yeah. young, don't we? We do. Yeah. Yeah. So we got yourself, we got Don Constable, David Haley, Ben Pisani and myself here. We're a teammate. We got the chance to, uh, go out for the, to the practice round from playing in Augusta State's tournament there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show another one here. Oh, got another one here. So, <laughs> yeah, so pretty, uh, pretty tiny there. So that's all. That's all. Twelve the mat at the masses. You, you and me. So I bet you're excited there to play that hole. Yeah, I'm really pumped. Um, I've spoken to a few people about the golf course and how to play it. I spoke to Brandon Grace yesterday. I played with him here, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm so excited as anyone would be. Yep, and I got another one here. Jeez, clean shaven. Look at that. <laughs> so yeah. Funny. Yeah. So for pretty, pretty cool stuff there. Uh, I know you're excited. We're excited to watch you compete there. So it's it's gonna it's gonna be awesome. It's been great to see you in all the other uh, other majors here too in the last kind of couple of years. So it's been awesome you getting those starts. Absolutely. Yeah. It's 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 been a fun run. Um, you know, I played my first major or was it 2018 um, at Carnoustie, and then. A few more last year so it's it's been fun to to really compete at, at the, the highest level of the game um and to kind of mix it up with some of the best yeah and competing you've done i mean you've you've played really well on the majors too so you've, you've performed really well so it's been really fun to watch yeah yeah i've had a had a few good finishes i guess um the pga at beth page obviously the standout finishing top 10 there and a couple of top 20s in in both the british open so it's it's I seem to enjoy the big occasion. Yeah. 
I got a quick question here. Um, have you gotten to play Augusta yet? Um, I've not. Um, obviously, you know, with it having moved, we were planning on being there the week prior to the date in April. Um, yep. I was going to get there on the Wednesday already before um, and, and play it. And, you know, uh, there's obviously something to say for for having experience on a golf course and good course knowledge, but you know, we've with with some of the majors, we've we found a really good formula that worked for me, and and um, we felt getting there the week before would have been ample time to get to know the golf course. Very cool. Yeah. So I was, I was wondering how that worked for preparation for for the Masters. I don't know if you once you get your invite, can you go there before, or is it just kind of pretty strict? No, you can you can you can go there before. I can go there now if I'd like. Well, I don't now. Yeah, <laughs> not, not a great time. But yeah. um, if things were normal uh, and with the Masters being in November, I would have been able to go there now. So um, obviously, you've got to organise it with them. And and I think there's a few rules that apply. Like a member has to play with me. I can't have other people come with and stuff like that. So, um, but it, it's it's. It's, it's great to open the doors for you and you can play once you get your invite. So, Very cool. Yeah. So jumping back to your time here at the U of M, um, I noticed you have come back to visit family and, and friends back in Minnesota. Uh, I want to touch on uh, how you've come into second swing a few times to uh, bring a few trades in. It's been kind of a little fun experience here to bring some of your, your good stuff in. Yeah, obviously, you, you know, since I was in college, we, we've always had a – the team always had a really good relationship with the guys at Second Swing. Um, I know the company's grown a ton since the days I've been there. Um, but I've come in a few times when we'd, we'd visit um, the in-laws up in, in Minneapolis and I'd come into the store and I'd trade a few wedges or a driver or stuff like that. And um, being in the privileged position of being a professional golfer, I get sometimes I have too much stuff in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, we we definitely appreciate all the trades. And yeah. if you've got any other tour professionals that are looking to get rid of some of their old stuff, old stuff is great stuff for us. I'll let them know. I'll it's let them know to send it your way. <laughs> yeah, open the doorway there for sure. So, yeah, we definitely are looking to accept plenty of trades. And I know, I know you've come in here to hit some balls in the wintertime there too when, you, when you've been around. So, yeah, we've definitely grown. Well, so. it, it's, a, it's a great setup. I've, I've never been to the to the Minnetonka store. I've only been to the one in Minneapolis. But, you know, great simulators up, um, great fitters. You know, the guys are really clued up. So, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a part of the game that's also sort of a light's been shining on it a lot more the last few years, people actually getting fitted for equipment because it's it's important. I do it as a professional. Why wouldn't you do it as an amateur? So, I'd recommend going into second swing and just getting it done. Yeah, the Minnetonka store, for example, we just had a, a remodel, and we've if we've got twelve bays here that all have TrackMan in them. Yeah, so that's we've got a tour van bay, and then we've got a whole bunch of other bays that are our demo bays as well. And everyone's fitted with, with TrackMan. We've got seven master fitters here. Um, we're excited to get back once the social distancing and once open so everything opens back up to get back to fitting. Um, mm -hmm. I've been fitting for the last three three years at Minnetonka, and it's 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 it makes a huge difference that's for sure and you can speak to that as absolutely. A absolutely it makes a massive difference having the track man there it's you know it's the number one product in in what we use as professionals so it's it's awesome yeah it is it's, it's a great uh great technology yeah. um how do you think the u of m prepared you for the professional tour um well for me you know i i i'm came from far away, right? South Africa is a long way from home, um, or Minneapolis is a long way from home. And um, I think first and foremost, getting out of the house at, at, at such a young age or as a kid, completely out of your comfort zone. I mean, Minnesota or Minneapolis is everything opposite to South Africa. So um, putting me completely out of my comfort zone, I had to mature a lot faster, right? So first and foremost, that was massive. Um, and then, you know, Minnesota at the time, well, still, we played a really strong schedule. Um, played places like Stanford, um, played, played against Alabama, traveled all over the country. So you play against some of the best competition, at least in the amateur world, out there. Um, 
And if that's not going to prepare you for professional golf, then nothing is. Yeah, I would completely agree with that. Um, Justin Smith, the head coach at the U of M, actually just logged on and just commented, is that a gopher hat he has on? Head on, head his on. So yeah, go gophers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Got the shirt on as well. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Very, very cool. Yeah, so yeah, we've, uh, we're very lucky that we did in Minnesota, we do get to travel to very good events. We, got a, we had a great schedule there. I can speak to that volume coming from New Zealand as well with preparing, taking you out, outside of your comfort zone. It's really just, it kind of, it, it shocks you at first, but it best prepares you for golf that is global. So. Absolutely. And, and, you know, golf is absolutely global, like you said, and, and you, you're never home. You really aren't. Even if you play the PJ Tour, um, you're traveling, and, and let's say you have a house in the US, you're traveling. 90% of the year. Um, so playing college golf, uh, you know, sets you up for that and you get used to that kind of thing. And you get used to playing different courses, different conditions, different players. Um, it's, it's it's the greatest way to prepare you for professional golf. Yeah. To follow up on that, I got another comment here. How did you get recruited by the golfers and what did you think about Minnesota winters? Um, <laughs> Getting recruited by the Gophers was a bit of a roundabout way. I used the company in South Africa. I, I, I definitely didn't have the the junior resume of, of some of my fellow South Africans. Um, so they were way more recognizable. But but I got a hold of Brad James through this company. Brad James was the head coach at the time. And um, he looked at my portfolio and videos and made contact with me. And I ended up coming on, on a visit to a few schools, Minnesota being one of them. And um, it was sort of end of May. So the weather was beautiful. The trees were, were pretty and the campus was quiet. Um, and I fell in love with it. He obviously, he didn't quite fool me in on, on the winters and how harsh it is. <laughs> but um, I fell in love with it. I mean, I met my wife on campus, her family, they're, they're, they're from Minneapolis, from Minnesota. Um, so I fell in love with the place. And again, it's, it's some of the best four years I've had in my life. Yeah. Well, we, you've, you've obviously got your uh, your best, best best friends here. You've, you've had Alex Feely uh, Gogger on your on your uh, on your bag the last kind of couple of years. And that's that's awesome to have him on. We'll kind of talk about that a little later, how that partnership has kind of helped you to get to kind of where you're at here. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I uh, I can definitely speak to those Minnesota winters. I remember that first day walking out when my nose hairs were freezing and unfreezing as I was breathing, walking to class. <laughs> Let's just say that semester, I didn't go to class maybe as much as I should have. <laughs> <laughs> Found about as every possible excuse I could to try and get out of going to class. Yeah, but, I, I, you yeah. need help, bud. <laughs> <laughs> but we got, got, got through it there, so... Um, uh, speaking of Minnesota, did you have a? This is a question from earlier. Do you have a favorite course in Minnesota that you that you played? Um, yeah, there's there's so many good ones. Um, you know, playing playing for Minnesota, we're fortunate to play some some of the best courses and some of the best private courses. Um, one of my favorite ones has always been Winsong Farms. Um, just the world's purest greens. Um, beautiful sloping fairways. Always love going out there. So that's got to be one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's awesome. It's always in great shape. Those greens are always rolling. About thirteen, I feel like every time we go out there. Right. Um, it's, it's a great facility. So. Guaranteed, guaranteed to have a few three putts that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. Didn't you shoot a pretty low score out there one time in qualifying? I did. Um, freshman year, it was it was the week before Big Tens. I shot 63 or 62, and, and I think uh, Lacassie or someone like one of the Aussies had the course record, um, and I missed it by one. So um, I ended up playing like absolute poop the next few days in Big Tens. But <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Like, yeah. yeah. I remember playing Big Tens with you that year. That was, that was awesome. We got, well, for me as a, as a senior, that you're getting to play Big Ten Championship at home was, was yeah. really, really, really cool. Absolutely. Um, so great facility out there. Um, talking about coming back to your caddy, Alex, um, you guys have had a great partnership. It's pretty cool to see basically you having your best friend on the bag. 
Um, how's your relationship on the court, on the course and off the course? Is it different? How do you guys kind of get along? And it's um yeah, it it is it is different. Um, it's different, but it's not because you know, first and foremost, he's one of my best friends. Um, and that's never going to change. And when we when we started doing this, um, our, our thing is always, or our commitment to each other is always absolute honesty. Um, you know, in this game and, and performing at this high level, the the smallest, most minute thing can can mean the difference between losing and winning. Right? To be, being number forty two in the world and being number one in the world, the margins are so small. Um, so in order for us to work together, there has to be complete honesty. And if that means he disagrees with me on a club choice or he disagrees with me on, on how much the wind's going to affect the ball or whatever it may be, um, I, I always know that it's coming from the right place. I always know that he's completely honest with me and that he's doing it because he believes what he's saying is going to allow us to play the best possible golf that day. So um at the end of the day it's still my call to pull the trigger and to do what, what i think is is best if i disagree with them but um and then, and then that goes for stuff off the course as well right if if he thinks um i behave poorly or or um let me just turn off my phone sorry if he thinks i behave poorly or or there's things we can do differently in our preparation for the next round we talk about it and and we evaluate every round and and how we went about it um, so our relationship on the golf course is, is very professional. Um, but then once, once we've, we're done with that day, we, we go back to being friends, right? And we, we, we crack jokes and, and do silly things. And, um, that's, that's part of why I love him. <laughs> yeah. You guys have an awesome partnership. It's been pretty cool to see, you know, you succeed with him and him on the bag. Um, it's, it's been awesome. And then I'll say, you know, he was, one of your best friends so it's, it's it's just awesome to have him there every day to make you perform the best that you possibly can so absolutely, absolutely. yeah great partnership you guys have there um got a question here and i kind of want to jump to kind of like a what's in the bag and what you've kind of what you've been playing the question i that came up here on facebook is how does club fitting choosing the clubs that end up in your bag change once you're established once you're an established professional um, how much work goes into choosing each club that goes into your bag. So I kind of wanted to jump to kind of what you're kind of playing. And I want to kind of walk, work through, you know, maybe you can explain some tendencies that you may have and maybe explain why you're playing a certain club, why it's that certain loft or anything like that. Um, so, yes, yeah, we can maybe – do you have your clubs with you by chance or um, – They are in the car. Actually. No problem. We can kind of talk about what you're, what you're playing here. So – um, you've been playing Callaway, mainly Callaway, right? The last kind of couple of years. Yeah, I've been playing Callaway the last sort of two, three years. Um, yeah. And I mean, obviously, love love the equipment. That's part of why I signed with them. So, um, first and foremost, I'm, I'm I'm a guy that it doesn't change too often. Um, you know, my my irons relatively stay the same. If if you know, I've made a few swing changes the last year or two, um, really small changes, but that might affect something like my attack angle, which will then, I'm getting quite technical, but which will then affect the, the amount of spin on the golf ball, right? So yep. something I would look at is is perhaps changing my shafts um, if I don't like the way the ball's flying, but I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a type of guy that, that, that changes around quite a lot. Um, if, if a new driver comes into play, um, the driver I, I still play is the Epic Flash from last year. Um, I'm still working on playing the Maverick. It's a great club. I just haven't quite found the fit for me. So um, the the only thing I would I would probably tinker with the most would be my wedges with regards to the amount of bounce it has. Um, you know, when we go to a British Open at Carnoustie or Portrush, um, it can be quite firm. So then you're looking for something with perhaps a little less bounce. Um, but, you know, when you come back to courses here in the US, it's predominantly quite soft. You, I'm, I'm going to go back to my, I think I've got eight degrees of bounce on my, on my 58 degree lob wedge. So um, 
it that's really the only thing that would that would kind of change throughout a season in my bag got it yeah so you've got the- oh, sorry. That, that said that said yeah. um the last year i've got quite a gap between my longest iron which is either two or three iron and my three wood so we've worked on on you know my my two iron goes about or oh, sorry my three iron goes about 234 yards and then my three wood goes like 265 270 so there's a massive gap so we've worked on getting a two iron in the bag which flies about 245 and a, and a hybrid a two hybrid um that goes about 250 to 255 so um i mix and match between the two iron and hybrid quite a lot depending on you know obviously the hybrid's going to come out a little bit easier out of the rough so like at beth page where the rough was really penal and you're playing such a long golf course we threw the two iron in the bag um or apologies the the, the two hybrid in the bag because it's going to glide through the rough a lot easier um but then on courses that might be a little bit shorter and tighter and you need a lot of it sort of fairway finder shots i throw the two iron back in the back because i can really work it hit it low hit it high um, yeah. it's really versatile so that's probably the the yeah that, that's where i'd make the most changes yeah so you kind of have 15 16 clubs where you maybe kind of depending on the course you're playing what you're trying to achieve that particular week you may throw on that hybrid or maybe throw on that driving iron or long grind exactly step. exactly Awesome. Yeah. So are you playing the epic flashes at the sub zero or the just the epic flash? It's just the standard head. Um, um, yeah, exactly. Yep. Standard head. Uh, what loft do you play? I've got 10 and a half. I've always had, I've always had quite a lot of loft in my driver. Okay. Um, you see professionals like Rory, I think he's got eight degrees of loft in his driver, but Rory also hits up like three or four degrees on his yep. driver. So, he's able to have only eight degrees of loft where me you know i only hit about one degree up on it so i needed the extra loft to get the ball up in there and to get the flight that i want got it yeah loft is uh definitely a friend to get that ball to carry a little bit further now you've made some huge huge advancements with regards to driving distance i, I noticed you were up kind of the up towards the top in the on the european tour on driving distance there last year um what do you think really kind of led to you picking up a little bit more distance there off the tee well um a few things i think first and foremost if you look at those pictures from where we were at augusta it was <laughs> quite a skinny stick um not that i'm not that i'm bryson dechambeau these days but I think <laughs> I really continuously worked on on my fitness and my strength since yep. um so you know when i when i came to college i think i was six two hundred and seventy pounds um i'm now still six two but i'm 197 so um i've gained a lot i've got a lot stronger but then at the same time um working with my swing coach the swing is a lot more stable and um it, it, it's, it's it's effortless power right the swing is is mechanically working way better in order for me not not having to hit it harder but still getting more distance so um the swing is better i'm, I'm using the ground a lot better with my lower body um and that all will, will in the end i guess through years of doing practicing good habits will, will lead to hitting it a bit further yeah i can uh i can remember the first day of workouts uh and freshman year <laughs> i know it was the exact same for me as well and you trying to bench press and i just remember that that day i remember being you just been really sore for that following kind of week there definitely made some changes with regards to freshman year to uh what yeah, you're right now. absolutely i mean that that first workout it's the first time i'm in a gym in my entire life and you know this workout supposed we did like a big circuit and it's supposed to take like half an hour and it's an hour into it i'm not done yet i'm the only guy left in the gym and I couldn't lift a glass of chocolate milk in Stanford Hall with my one arm. I had to use both arms to sort of drink that glass. Of ch- I will remember this for the rest of my life. Yeah. I remember the same for me as well. I remember I having to go out and play in a booster event at TPC Twin Cities that, that afternoon after my first gym workout there. <laughs> and the, the boosters must have thought, what? have you brought into this i could hardly hit the ball like right. it was, it was right. so embarrassing all right well, who did yeah. these guys recruit <laughs> <laughs> like, welcome to minnesota so yeah that was uh 
interesting times, but you know, long-term development, it definitely got you where you're at. Um, I know I should for sure be lifting a little bit more than I do, but you know, it's great to see how you're got stronger, you know, for the long run, not just, just in, in the right, you know, it's, essentially it's in the right places. It's not just, you're getting bulked up. You're just getting long, stronger, leaner. Absolutely. Um, you know, I've been working with, with the trainer, him and my coach work, work, um, really closely together. His name's Garth Mullen and I've been working with Garth since 2014 or 15. I'm not sure. Um, and it's definitely not, let's go see how much weight we can throw around. There's it's, it's specifically planned out. Right. And it, and it's a combination between lifting heavy and doing mobility work, doing stability work. So, you know, it's, it's not all about, let's see how much I can squat. It's about, doing a, a certain movement with control while being in a certain position in the backswing as well. So it's, it's, yeah. it's a whole combination of things. Yeah, very cool. Um, jumping back to the other clubs in your bag. So you're playing Epic Flash Driver, Epic Flash 3-wood as well? I've got the Maverick 3-wood in the bag. Um, okay. Yeah, fan in love with it the minute I hit it. So. Yeah, and then are you playing with was it the utility? Was it the Apex utility that you're playing around with, or the? Yeah, it's an Apex utility, um, the two iron, and I've got the three iron or the, the twenty one degrees. So I've got a twenty one and an eighteen degree. Um, okay, got it. Yeah. And then your irons are they blades all the way through, or do you go a combo, or? I've got blades all the way through. Um, I've, I've tinkered with a thought in the back of my mind to maybe get get a bit of a combo set, especially with the longer irons. Um, it just allows for a little bit more forgiveness. Um, but I love the look of a blade and, and um, yeah. Yeah. it's just, it's just something I really like and, and I play really well with them. So um, maybe when, when I'm, I'm hit my forties, maybe then I'll make the change, you know, <laughs> I already made the change. I got a little combo set going. I'm playing, I'm playing Apex MVs uh, seven through pitching wedge, and then I got four, five, six in the uh, and the X Forge. So yeah, I kind of made a little combo set. Essentially for me, it was you know seven irons, kind of my where I maybe start make that transition to maybe not pull quite at the flag. So that's where I make that transition for the for the combo set there. I love that. Yeah. So and then wedges, uh, you got. Uh, so pitching wedge with the set or is it a specialty wedge? So pitching wedge with the set. Um, yep. And then I've got a 50 degree gap wedge, 54 and 58. Okay. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. And then what shafts are you playing? Are they the same with the wedges and the irons or? Same with the wedges and the irons. Um, that's also something I've, I've thought about. I know that some guys go to perhaps a bit of a softer shaft in, in, in the wedges. Um, I've never done it. I've never done that since college um so I'm, I'm i've just got the same shaft throughout okay very cool yeah i i tried that i've kind of tried both both options and right now i'm playing the softer step down essentially mm -hmm. uh, s400 in my wedges as opposed to playing an extra step shaft just to just you know quite swing quite as hard with those clubs so right, right. Yeah, definitely pluses to you know doing whatever you feel comfortable with doing there as well um yeah, very yeah so um coming back to your team you, you mentioned how you were kind of working with your trainer you got a coach um how are you preparing right now with your team to try and prepare for your next event and do you know what your primarily primarily next event will be approximately um well if the schedule goes ahead as scheduled then i'll i'll be playing in the the, the troll schwab i think the, the colonial um will be the first one on june 11th so um, and then the, the next week, I think it's the RBC Heritage. So I'll play in both of those. Um, right now, obviously, it's quite tricky with no one being able to travel. Uh, but I've, I've got a good program that I've been working on um, in the gym um, with my trainer. I'm doing two a days at the moment. It's it's more of a cardio session in the morning, and then um, either strength training or sort of stability work in the afternoon, depending on, on what day of the week it is, what my recovery is like. Um, apologies for that. Um, and then with regards to my coach, um, I just got a tripod. So I've got a little, little attachment for my phone. I'm heading to the course this afternoon. I'll put him on FaceTime and, and we'll, we'll run, we'll run our program, I guess with him, with him on the tripod and, 
you know, looking through a screen. Yeah. I had another question here. Um, this is you know, another question. Do you work with like a um, sports psychologist or anything like that? Yeah, um, um, I do. And I'm glad you asked. That's prop. I started working with a lady in South Africa the end of 2015. Um, and that's that's a was a defining moment in my career where things started going a lot better i played the soundtrack to her up until the middle of 2016 end of 2016 um um and didn't have a ton of success up until that period um and when i started working with her that's where things kind of started getting a much better and, and i started seeing some more consistent results and started winning and um so i still work with her very cool. Yeah. So the question was, how do you keep control and calm of your emotions on the course and miss and miss the pressure? Pre-shot routine, breathing, meditation. Um, I do do I do practice meditation. Um, it's a deep breathing meditation mostly. It, it it allows you to focus simply on your breathing. Uh, what that what that helps you with is your ability to focus on simply one the one thing. That's what means it means to be truly in the present right um and once you start doing it you'll you'll realize how hard it actually is so everybody talks in the golfing world talks about oh you've got to be in the present moment well when you're putting to win the green jacket and you've got a one-shot lead with three to play it's pretty hard to not think about lifting you know or wearing that green jacket afterwards so you've got to practice these things to help you for that moment um and he, I, I can see the question you mentioned: pre-shot routine, breathing, um, all of those things help. I think I think everything from the preparation I'm doing now, the workouts I'm doing in the morning, the the focused and attentive practice I do when when I am working, I'm I'm not, I'm not there fooling around and talking to my mates. I'm there working and getting my job done. Um, that sort of focus and attention to detail brings confidence um pre-shot routine um brings a level of comfortability when you're on the golf course and then deep breathing obviously helps with the uh, um, physiological aspects of it you know when your palms start to sweat or your heartbeat starts your heart starts racing and you've got the butterfly feelings in your stomach um we all want that it means you're in the place you want to be um you're probably in contention if you're feeling those things so um, the deep breathing just helps to l lower that heart rate and, and um, you know, lower the adrenaline levels and essentially hit better golf shots. Yeah, I think that pretty much sums up the following question, essentially what you're thinking about when you're standing over a six-footer that could be worth thousands of dollars. I mean, well, yeah. yes, we're playing for a lot of money, but, and, and, and I guess there's a the massive spotlight on that, but... I didn't. I didn't start playing golf because I wanted to be a millionaire. I started playing golf because I love the game. Um, so when I'm standing over that six footer to win a golf tournament, um, I'm not thinking about the money. I'm thinking about I want to win this golf tournament, and how do I how do I do that? Well, it comes back to what I just said: being in the present moment, focusing on the task at hand, and that is reading the six footer properly. I've done it a million times, trusting my read. Um, you know, Patrick Harrington has these great little little videos on Twitter. Everybody should go look at them. He talks a lot about the mental side of things, a lot of really good technique. And he said the other day, choking is changing your mind over the shot. It's not leaving the putt short or hitting it too firm or whatever. Choking is if you're over the ball and you've decided I'm hitting the six-footer right edge, and then you go, oh, maybe it's a little bit more, or oh, maybe it's a little bit less. That's choking, right? Because you're second guessing yourself. Yep. Um, so to, to come back to the question, what I think about when I'm over that six footer is I'm thinking about, okay, I'm reading this putt, it's right edge, I'm lining it up to right edge, and I'm stroking the ball to make it. And essentially, that's it. Now, when you're obviously, when you're under pressure, your mind can race. Mm -hmm. um, your job is to come back to your task at hand as well as you possibly can. 
Yeah, that's a that's a great answer. Um, essentially, staying in the present as well as as well as you can, and just end the day. That if it's a right edge putt, it's it's a right edge putt, and that's end of the day. And, that yeah, and you know what? If if it misses, um, hopefully it misses, not because I second guessed myself. Um, hopefully it misses because hey, it was the wrong line, and and we're all gonna get that wrong. I'm just a human being, right? Um, if I if I know that I committed to that line and I committed to my putt and and and, and the pace, um, and it didn't go in, tough luck, man. It's, it's that's sports. We've all you know Jordan, Michael Jordan's missed how many free throws in his life? Tiger's missed how many you know short putts? I've missed a lot of short putts. It's that's just how it is. Yeah. All right, I got a couple of quick more questions here. I know your time is very really, very valuable for you here. You know, getting ready for. A great, I know you can have a great rest of 2020 when we reopen here. Um, to kind of follow up on that, uh, we amateurs have the ability to sit back and enjoy playing the game of golf. For you, like you just said, it's both a game of a game and a job. Does it feel ever like a job, or does it something just fun and something essentially someone just going out and playing with friends on the weekend? Um, yeah, it's it's a really really good question. Um, I always thought as an amateur. Um, and as a kid just playing the game, that it would always just be fun. Um, but sometimes that's not the case, and, and you realize that as a, as a professional golfer. I mean, there's times when all you want to do is be home. Um, I'm fortunate enough where my wife can travel with me most weeks. We, we don't have a family yet. Um, so, you know, home almost comes with in that sense. But when you've played 30, 34 events a year, and especially in the European tour, where you're traveling the one week, you're in Morocco, then you're in China, then you're back in the UK, you get tired, man. And and, and you just, yeah, it, it becomes a job. Um, and let's say, for example, you're going through a bit of a slump and you're not playing your best, you, you want a bit of a break. Um, so it does become a job. But in the essence of it, I still love this game, right? So give me two weeks off and I'm itching to get back out there again. Yeah, I know. I'm itching to get back out there as soon as I can play events. I'm sure you're itching out, get back out there and play in the events there for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, last question I kind of last left for last here. Um, what inspired the joggers as your fashion state? Ah, I saw that coming. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, I used to be, I, I used to be sponsored by Nike. Um, and then when, when that ended, I Grayson Grayson approached me and, and, and they had the joggers as one of the options. And um, I really like them. I think it's it's something different, yet it's still classy and neat and tidy. It's it's I'm not a huge fan of like the loudmouth brand that John Daly wears with super bright colors and different patterns. I think the joggers, even though they push the envelope a little bit of the traditionalist. Um, it's still classy and, and neat and tidy, and, and, and I like that it was a bit different. So um, that's why I wear them. And, and if you don't have one, you should get one. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to uh, give them a try, I guess. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know really? if I can get over it. but <laughs> <laughs> You can rock them, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> you can rock them, yeah. So, well, Eric, thanks so much for your, your time for our viewers. Pay attention to Eric One Run. He's going to have a great rest, you know, golf career in 2020 and going forward. So keep an eye on out on the name. He's, you know, he's been, done great things so far. I can only see he's going to, going to get better and better. So, Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolute pleasure. And, and thanks for all the good questions, Thomas. Good to see you, bud. All right. Thanks. Go golfers. That's it. Go golfers. See you guys. Bye.